Hello world, Apple has had screw up after screw up for the past couple of weeks. The first in a long list of snafus is a rather interesting arbitrary code execution bug hidden within macOS. Apple tried patching this exploit but failed miserably, more on that in a bit. The vulnerability makes use of the little known file type initlock, which stands for internet network location, or at least that's my best guess, as this macOS file extension is so unknown that Apple's own dev site doesn't even have an article on it. The earliest reference to this little known file type that I can find is a forum post about it from 2004. In its lock files are essentially meant to facilitate internet shortcuts. Drag a link from a text editor to a Mac's desktop and you get one of these internet shortcut files. But someone figured out you could also use it as a shortcut to open local files using the file prefix instead of HTTP. This proof of concept opens the calculator app which doesn't sound so harmful, but if you configure one of these files to open a terminal window and pass certain arguments through, then it could become a whole lot more nefarious. A bad actor can add these shortcut files as email attachments, which can quite easily be opened within macOS's native mail app, as it doesn't warn you the file you're opening could be harmful. To make matters worse, Apple released a patch for this bug last year in Big Sur. However, it's been uncovered that Apple didn't put their fix through even the most rudimentary of checks, as whilst the file prefix is now disallowed and trying to open an init lock file will simply return an error, Apple didn't take into account uppercase characters in that file prefix, meaning switching any of the characters to uppercase will bypass Apple's fix and allow you to run your evil wares on any given Mac. There's no evidence of anyone actively exploiting this bug in the wild, at least not that I've seen, but as of making this video, the vulnerability is still active in the latest version of macOS. The bug itself was responsibly disclosed via the SSD disclosure program, where you can find that proof of concept code. A rather serious flaw in Apple's contactless payment system, Apple Pay, has been discovered by researchers here in the UK. The exploit allows an attacker to activate Apple Pay without unlocking your phone and secretly trigger transactions costing you thousands of pounds. This could all be done whilst your phone is tucked away in your pocket using relatively cheap RFID hacker hardware. The researchers published a paper which explains the hack, but they leave out some details to make it more difficult for criminals who want to take advantage of this. The researchers had no choice but to be careful with what they published, because whilst they initially reported the problem to Apple this time last year, it still hasn't been patched, but more on that in a bit. The vulnerability works by exploiting iPhone's express travel feature. Usually you have to unlock your iPhone to use Apple Pay, but this feature allows you to use Apple Pay whilst locked, but only with certain pre-approved travel networks. This makes it easy to pay for public transport on the go without unlocking your phone every time you get on a bus. The White Hats have found that these pre-approved public transport card readers transmit what the researchers have dubbed magic bytes, which are able to unlock Apple Pay without use authentication. The researchers figured out that by replaying these magic bytes to a target phone, they could trick it into thinking it was a legitimate payment terminal. A video they made demonstrates the hack in action. The researchers used a proxmark that interacts with the target, performing the Magic Bytes hack. A proxmark is essentially an RFID and NFC hacking tool. They cost a few hundred pounds at most and definitely aren't hard to get a hold of. The proxmark communicates with a connected computer, which in turn communicates with an Android device. The Android device acts as a card simulator, which can be used to transact with any payment terminal, just as if it were the victim iPhone. So here they run the script from the laptop, the target iPhone has its Apple Pay activated whilst locked, the Android device is then used as a conduit to make the actual payment with an attacker controlled payment terminal. So in a real life scenario, someone could touch a Proxmark device in public to someone's pockets containing a target phone. The Proxmark could then talk to a laptop in their bag, which could in turn communicate with the malicious Android device over the internet to someone miles away, even in another country, which could then make the fraudulent transaction. It's a very involved hack and would obviously take some real technical knowledge on the part of an attacker, but it is eminently doable and the reward for going to all the effort is quite high. The researchers were able to make a fraudulent transaction of £1,000. Something to note is that this only affects Visa cards, other payment systems don't have this issue, but given Visa makes up half of all credit card purchases worldwide, it is a big problem. So surely Apple and Visa have come together to provide some panacea for this problem. 
not so fast. The details of this vulnerability have been disclosed to Apple and to Visa. Both parties acknowledge the seriousness of this vulnerability, but have not come to an agreement on which party should implement a fix. I couldn't find a statement from Visa or Apple, it just seems like they've been dragging the heels on this one, and I haven't seen any reasonable excuses describing any technical challenges a fix would pose. The best thing you can do is simply not to use the express payment option on an iPhone with a Visa card, or vote with your wallet and switch from Visa to literally anything else. Apple's brand new iCloud private relay service has been found to have a vulnerability which makes the whole system kind of useless. The exploit can be used to grab a user's IP address. iCloud private relay is kind of like a VPN built into iPhones, but it only works on Safari and doesn't hide the region you're located in, so it's not really on the same level as a VPN. The vulnerability is made possible by a browser API called WebRTC. It's a browser API for websites to establish direct communication between website visitors. All modern browsers support WebRTC. RTC natively. For example, Google Hangouts is one of the more popular applications that uses WebRTC. I'm abstracting away a lot of the detail here, but essentially when a browser wants to connect to another browser using WebRTC, it'll send its connection details such as IP import to the website server from where it has communicated with the other browser. Long story short, this is how the real IP of a user can be leaked, as Apple forgot to include this kind of communication within the scope of Private Relay. This exploit is a testament to the fact that Private Relay shouldn't really be relied upon to keep you hidden. It is at best a quasi-VPN. However, in fairness, Private Relay is currently still in beta, and a fix for this bug has already been rolled out to the macOS version, presumably with the iPhone update soon to come. If you want to be certain your IP is hidden, you will need to use a device-wide proxy or VPN, which, funnily enough, today's sponsor can help you with. VPNs are useful and help to keep you private and secure, but they come with a trove of issues. Mainly, would you entrust a VPN company with your traffic over your ISP? The bottom line is that if you didn't set up a VPN server yourself, you really can't be sure these VPN companies won't keep logs, sell your data, or monitor your traffic. That's why I've teamed up with Linode to give you the opportunity to host your own private VPN for free. Linode is a totally customizable cloud hosting platform with a whole host of server apps you can install with one click. Using their WireGuard or OpenVPN app, you can spin up a private VPN controlled wholly by yourself in a matter of minutes. Linode launched way back in 2003. That's three years before AWS was even a thing. Linode doesn't spend a second on side hustles like grocery chains or reading you bedtime stories. Cloud computing is what they do best and is their only focus. Linode is offering all of you guys $100 in free credit just for signing up. Use your $100 to instantiate your private VPN or literally anything else cloud computing related. They have 24-7 phone support, which is a godsend in the world of servers, so you'll never be left out in the cold. Go to linode.com slash satonic or click the link in the description to claim your free $100. A bug hunter has shared his frustrating experience dealing with Apple. Within a new blog post, he publicly discloses multiple active vulnerabilities in the latest version of iOS. Not usually the done thing for white hats, but more on that in a sec. One, Dennis, reported all of these bugs to Apple in some cases over six months ago, but Apple didn't seem to care. Apple acknowledged Dennis's submissions, but never fixed the bugs, even despite him pestering Apple about them every few months. Publicly disclosing active vulnerabilities with proof of concept code is only really seen as acceptable if a white hat has exhausted all means of responsibly informing the developers of the problem. This is a textbook example of when it's reasonable to just publicly tell everyone there's active zero days out there. To make matters worse, these bugs aren't completely trivial. They allow malicious apps to access Apple ID account information, Apple ID authentication tokens, contacts for mail, pull details from the Wi-Fi network you're connected to, and so on. Apple did patch one of these vulnerabilities, but strangely, details of the fix were missing from Apple's public list of security updates. Apple said this was due to a processing issue and that the researcher's credit would be included on the next security advisories in an upcoming update. But the next update came and there was still no mention of the bug. It's all very strange. This guy goes out of his way to responsibly inform Apple of problems in their OS, but they don't bother to fix the vulnerabilities he finds. And when they do get round to patching one of them, they refuse to credit him. Apple responded to his blog post just 24 hours after it went live. Very weird timing there. Apple seems to be very snappy in getting to issues which harm their reputation. In the response, they apologized for the delay and said they're still investigating the vulnerabilities he uncovered. Quite astonishingly, the same day the blog post went up, a jailbreak on Reddit released fixes for the bugs. To clarify, a guy on Reddit managed to patch multiple vulnerabilities the same day they were made known to him. 
but the most valuable company on earth couldn't patch them in six whole months and still hasn't. If you enjoy this kind of video, make sure to help me out by fondling the like button for the YouTube AI, as well as turning on those sub notifications. If you want to see what goes on behind the scenes, make sure to follow me on the Instagrams. I'm at Jonty. I will of course link it in the description. And if you're looking for something to watch next, go check out my previous video on how Anonymous hacked the controversial hosting provider Epic. As always, sources will be linked in the video description. Stay tuned for more hacking videos and have a good one.